There are things we take for granted. The sun rises in the east, water flows downhill, the earth rotates, and then there are things we believe we've understood. Until satellites begin to see something different. Things written in textbooks, accepted by generations of scientists, things no one questions anymore. In 2013, the European Space Agency launched three identical satellites into orbit. Swarm, they called the mission. Three guardians circling our planet and measuring its magnetic field. Not once, not twice, but continuously, year after year, Earth's magnetic field, invisible, immense, essential to life. Without it, the solar wind would erode our atmosphere, satellites would fail, life as we know it would never have emerged. It is the silent guardian of our planet, and we thought we had understood it. An electric force acts through this space. From morning to evening, the theory was simple, elegant, even. The magnetosphere, the region of space dominated by Earth's magnetic field, stretches from the morning side of our planet to the evening side. And because electric forces act from positive to negative charge, the logic seemed inescapable. The evening side, negative, the morning side had to be positively charged. That's what the textbook said. That's what was taught at universities in Tokyo, London, Cambridge, Boston. That's what generations of physicists believed. But the satellites saw something else. The first hints came quietly. Individual measurements that didn't quite fit. But the longer swarm orbited Earth, the clearer a pattern became. Deviations that could be dismissed as measurement errors. The morning side wasn't positively charged. And the evening side, positive. It was negative, exactly reversed. In August 2025, a research team from Kyoto University, Nagoya University, and Kyushu University published their findings. Decades of theory overturned by satellite data. The magnetic field was charged opposite to what we believed. The question was no longer whether the measurements were correct. In the equatorial region, the largest part of the magnetosphere, not everywhere, not always, but where it mattered, the question was, how could this be? And more importantly, why had it taken so long for us to notice? There's a dangerous moment in science. It becomes a fact, a foundation, something you no longer question. The moment when a theory becomes so accepted that it ceases to be a theory. And in that moment, you stop measuring. You stop doubting. Earth's magnetosphere has been intensely studied since the 1960s. You see only what you expect to see. The Van Allen radiation belts, discovered in ninth, the magnetopause, the boundary of our magnetic shield, the plasmasphere, the ionosphere, the magnetotail, or believed we did. We mapped the structures, we understood the processes, but there was a problem. Most early measurements came from one side, from one perspective. We measured the electric force, we saw its direction, and we drew the logical conclusion about charge distribution. Yusuke Abihara of Kyoto University is a man who asks questions. No one questioned the fundamental assumption. No one measured the charge directly. He didn't discard the data. He didn't dismiss it as measurement error. When satellite data began showing the opposite of what theory predicted, he didn't do what many would have done. Instead, he built a model, MHD as physicists call it, magnohydrodynamics, the mathematics that describes how charged particles behave in magnetic fields how plasma flows, how electric fields build up, how forces act. These are complex equations requiring supercomputers, simulations that run for days or weeks. But if you do it right, you can recreate the magnetosphere. You can simulate the solar wind pressing against our magnetic shield. You can see what happens. And what Ibihara saw changed everything. The simulation confirmed what the satellites showed, negative charge on the morning side, positive on the evening side. In the polar regions, everything remained as the old theory predicted, but not everywhere. Positive in the morning, negative in the evening. Only in the equatorial region, over a vast area, was the polarity reversed. Why, Ibihara asked in his publication, do we see opposite polarities between these regions? The answer didn't lie in the charge itself. It lay in the motion. Plasma. The fourth state of matter. Not solid, not liquid, not gas but ionized. Atoms that have lost their electrons, charged particles streaming through space. This plasma doesn't flow randomly. Driven by the solar wind, guided by the magnetic field, 
accelerated by electric forces. It follows patterns, it forms currents, it creates convection. For decades, physicists had confused cause and effect. And this convection, it turned out, is what determines the charge distribution. Not the other way around. They thought charge creates the electric force. The electric force drives the plasma, but in truth, it's the plasma that moves, 